Hello, I'm Harvey S., and we're here at Colstein NYC at Harvey's Corner. And this is a new podcast, and I'm highlighting some of the wonderful bass players around the New York area that play in all kinds of situations and never get a lot of recognition. <laughs> and they're very interesting people, and they have great stories. So... Um, this is called Bass in the Corner, and that's the name of the podcast. And today we are so lucky to have my good friend, Bill Mooring. Thank you, Harvey. I really appreciate it, buddy. Good. Good to see you, Bill. How are you feeling? Everything good? Yeah, everything's cool. Good, good, know, good, good. So, so anyway, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Just go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> now, I made a joke earlier. Yeah. Uh, I said, can I ask you a question? And I said, yeah, can you give me five bucks? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So like, no, I'm not going to ask you for any money. I that's why that reminds me of a Jaco story, but that's yeah, okay. Yeah, we all know that. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, um, so as, as a bass player, lately, what are you doing? Uh, lately, I am well. I just started teaching again for the semester at Montclair State, and oh, great. Um, so you know we have a busy, growing program out there, and it's you know it's really good. And and then I'm just playing. Uh, you know, gigs I was playing this summer <laughs> with different people. I'm trying to think who, uh, Harry Allen, uh, Freddie Hendricks, uh, Andy Ezrin, um, yeah, different little projects. I got a little duo thing coming out with Harry Allen. We did, we're doing a little remote recording and oh, nice. just trying to stay busy, you know, I mean, in the trenches, baby. Right. You know? Right. But you, you, you know. You work and yes. all great stuff and and always, you know, really on the scene um, and have been for a long time. Yeah, I have been for a long time, yeah. Right. Long, long, long time. So, yeah. So, like, uh, how did you, like, okay, you, you were a youngster. Mm -hmm. How did you, you know, it's it's not like people, you know, stare you into this usually. You know, you, you how did you find your way into becoming a bass player? I grew up in Indiana. Uh -huh. There were very few bass players. And uh, when I was really young, a great drummer grabbed me when I was about 16, named John Von Olin. Uh, and you know who John was, right? I toured with him when I was with Stan Kenton. Oh, my God. So I you, love you John know. Von Olin. John, John was the One of the greatest, greatest drummers yeah. and one of the most wonderful people I've ever known. He was a, a sage and, yeah. a, and a really wonderful person for me to be around that age because – I was kind of all over the place, you know, playing electric bass. Playing. He saw your talent. I, that's the kind of guy he, he was. He did. And immediately said, I want you to play in my band. And I'm wow. like, but, but I, 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 and he said, don't worry about it. You know, <laughs> it true. was that kind of thing. So I played five years with him and then. Oh, uh, that the, you can't beat that. Yeah. That was, that was a education for me. And then I moved to New York and just, called people up like yourself and said, you know, if you need a sub for a rehearsal or a session, um, I'm available. I did that with like a bunch of bass players, just called them all up and said, you know, I'm, I'm available you right. know, for yeah. anything, you, you know, get out there and do it. And in the words of John Von Olin, I think he said to me uh, at one point, he said, take every gig. You're going to probably learn the most from the ones you hate. That's so true. <laughs> He said, you, you know, you figure stuff out. So I, I definitely come from the school of uh, play a lot, play every day, and you'll figure it out. Uh, you know, that's yeah. kind, of, kind of what I tried to do. You know? Right. Did, did, you, uh, did you go to school at all? I went. <laughs> it's interesting. I had a scholarship uh, to go to Indiana State, and oh. I, I went for three semesters, and then I took a gig on the road with every intention of going back to school, but I just never made it back. So. Well, you know, school is not always the answer. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Of course, now you, you're, after all that, you end up as a teacher. Well, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a funny thing. You know, it's, it is really funny actually, yeah. because I always was a little insecure about everything actually, but mostly about my, my theory knowledge. And then, 
they needed somebody to teach theory at Montclair State. Oh. This was a f- quite a few years ago. Wow. And I said, sure, yeah, I could do it, you know. And I'm freaking out. And I, I, but I get the book. It was uh, Mark Levine's book. Oh, I love that. It's book. a really good book. You that's know? a phenomenal book. So I'm going through the book, and I'm like, oh, that's what that is. Oh, that's what that is. Oh, that's what that is. It was like, okay, I guess I know the stuff, but I don't know what it's called or whatever. So that was that was good for me to to get Mark that Mark Levine book. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was a, you know, a lot of piano players use that book. Yeah, you know, and, and a lot it's of a books. very simple way of approaching things. I think you know, it's it's logical and. It's not too much information. It's just <clears throat> the right amount of information, I think. You know? Right. It's not too intense that you, you know, that you, it, you go phase out the blanks. <laughs> yeah. They're like, uh, they're, they're in headlight, yeah. you know, uh, so that doesn't happen. Oh, that's great. So uh, uh, you did that. And so you went to school for a while. Did they have a bass teacher there when you were there or did you study bass? Or I did. I studied. Uh, there was no uh, jazz teacher. So oh, I, I studied with Stuart Arfman who is the principal of the uh, Indianapolis Philharmonic. Okay. Phenomenal bass player. He had player. to be. He has to be. He was incredible. And a great teacher. I also studied, um, I think, one semester with Patricia Doherty, mm. another classical teacher who lives out here now. And I've been saying I was going to contact her, and I haven't done it yet. I haven't right. seen her in like... You, you play German bow, French bow? German. German bow, me too, yeah. yeah. And I just kind of, you know, growing up in Indiana, there was really nobody to hear and the internet wasn't happening yet. So it was like study classical, learn how to play the bass, copy records, you know. That's what, what I did. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, I, I know because I like your playing and that's oh, what I you. hear in it. You know, it's that, it's that, in fact, I just did a gig for uh, James Weidman this summer. Oh, nice. And he sent me the recordings and the music. And I'm listening, I'm like, damn, who's this bass player? He's killing. And then I found out it was you. I was like, oh, gosh. You know, we don't get to hear each other enough. You know? I know, I know. But, you know? Uh, but, I mean, my first thing was like, this bass player is killing. Who is this? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there you go. Oh, wonderful. So now, speaking of recordings, yes. uh, do you have any recordings? I do. I have uh, two records that I do. Do you have them with you? I do. Think? Would you like to see them? Yes. I have yes. them right here well, in my then, little magic bag. I would love to see these recordings. Yeah. And, and so would all the people who watch the podcast would like to. You can put them up and they, they everybody would like to see them. There they are. Ah, they, they, way Out East. Way Out East. That's and the name of my band. Spaces in Time. Well, it's also Way Out East, but yes, that's the name of the I didn't name this record, you know. Right. Way Out East is the name of the band. And the record. And the record. It's well, got no title. Name. That's okay. And who's in the band? Uh, Jack Walrath. Oh, wow. Tim Armacost, Steve Johns. Oh, wow. And then, say again? Oh, right in front of my face? Like that. They're actually available on <clears throat> on the streaming sites as of a couple of months ago. Steve Johns was telling me, he says, you need to get these records on the streaming sites. I'm like, yeah, what well, took about 10 years, but I did it. You know, these were, these were done in uh, 2005 and 2008. Now tell me, did you write music on this? Did yes. You, are they are they original tunes? All Not of- all originals. It's kind of a cooperative, actually. The band ah. s- the band started. J- Steve and I had just been to Japan together, and and uh, our dear friend Jay Anderson, right, <laughs> right. Had, Jay had said, "Hey, bro, I built this studio in my house. If you want to come up and record," and I was like, "Yeah, bet I'll do that." You know, right. So I went up and did this thing and we just kind of threw together a band and it was really good. So uh, somebody picked it up and put it out. And then then I planned the second one. So there's more compositions on that. I think there's um, uh, just one of my compositions on the first one and three on the second one. So. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to hear it sometime. Yeah, I'll, I'll, Here. I'll definitely. Oh, really? Take them. They make I'll great you, coasters. This podcast has been great because look, you got all these. CDs. I'm getting some booty here, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, right. I'm getting uh, now. I got a. Unfortunately, I do have a CD player. I get to to listen to all to all these uh, great records. A lot of people have been giving me these CDs. So I'm gonna take them home and slowly but surely get to them. There you go. You know, that's um, that's it. I, I'm a little behind in my listening, but I will get to them. That's eventually. Right. Take your time. You know? um, yeah. So. Um, 
let's see. I think we talked about everything, but essentially, uh, it, 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 did you enjoy coming to the shop today? The shop is amazing. Oh, cool. I have to say, all of you out there, this place is really great. There's basses everywhere, <laughs> and they all sound great. Yeah, they have wonderful instruments. And, you know, and Barry's great. And, uh, and you, you tried know. the Heritage Strings today. And I tried the Heritage Strings, <clears throat> which I, I bought a new bass in uh, March. Oh, I didn't I know did. I, it was a backline bass that I was on the road with Madeline Peru last year, and and I uh, found a bass that I really liked, and I it was cheap, so I bought it, and it's great. And You're I'm happy with it. Trying, <clears throat> very happy. It's got a huge... Booty, so you're so thinking maybe putting on the heritage on them? Yeah, I've been I've been going through all the different strings, trying to figure it out. I don't you know. know. The heritage strings for me, I don't know. I never heard anything that could come close to it. it well, it, you and I are older, and we like that woody thing. It's got that, you know that that woody warmth. It's that, not that you know wah, wah sound. I, it's I like, can't do that. It's it's not <laughs> it's not gut strings, but it's got a, a purloin purloin core. Right. So it's got a little bit, you know, what I say, a little more thump in it. Yeah. But yet it sustains. Yeah. So I mean, it's really the ideal. I think it's the string of the, of the now. You know, it's not the '60s or '70s or '80s sound. It's more like the new sound, which is not, which is not too whiny, which was that the '80s thing, <sighs> and and it's not too thumpy, which was like the '50s. Thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Somewhere it's in between. Got the, to, both in it, and, and, they, and they stay. Once they've broken in after about a week, they really stay in tune, really. I play the whole gig. I just, you know, I play the whole set. The bass stays right in tune the whole set. I get up for the next set, and it's 98% in tune still. Wow. So they're, they're really great, great strings. So yeah. anyway, Into I'm it. honored to have you here, oh, and, and great you, to see you, Bill. You know I'm honored to, to be here with you. Thank uh, you, and thanks mm -hmm. for coming. No. And uh, please come by the shop anytime. Thank you, brother. Okay. Appreciate it. <laughs>